My name is John Knight, and welcome to the second annual Inclusion Fusion Disability Web Summit. I want to extend my thanks to Key Ministries and PajamaConference.com for making this free event possible. My topic today is for the sake of your own joy, why your church should want families like mine. I'm an unlikely person to speak to this topic. You see, after our oldest son was born with his multiple disabilities, I took my family out of the church. I concluded that God was certainly strong, but he was not good or kind. In fact, I concluded that God was capricious and cruel. Today my son lives with blindness, autism, cognitive disabilities, growth hormone deficiency, a seizure disorder, and orthopedic eating and sleeping issues. But God, in His mercy, called one family to pursue us. One day God revealed the depths of my own depravity and my desperate need for Jesus, and that brought us back to church to learn more about this God who rescued me along with a desire to be with the people of God. Today I serve at Desiring God, where we distribute the God-centered resources from the ministry of Pastor John Piper of Bethlehem Baptist Church. There are many reasons to have a disability ministry. The sheer numbers alone are ample reason, with nearly one in five Americans living with some disability, and one in ten living with a severe disability. But I want to focus on something I hope will interest you just as much, your own joy. I appreciate as a leader, a member of a church, that this may not be your first reaction when a family like mine first shows up. By definition, we are not a normal family, and you might not have any clue what to do or to say. My son is complicated, but at least he is pleasant. I have not always been pleasant, bringing my hurt, my bitterness, my anger into the church. And because the various systems we deal with, educational, legal, social service, and medical, teach us parents that we must advocate for almost everything we've been taught how to fight and that we can't always fight fair. And that can spill over into how we behave at your church. So I can appreciate your skepticism that there might be joy involved here. Obligation or duty seems clear, but joy? Yes. First, it goes right to the heart of why you are in ministry. Whether you're in a missionary or a church planter, in a mega church or a home church, a volunteer for a couple of kids, or oversee 500 volunteers serving thousands and thousands of children. You are doing it because God called you from death to life, John 5, 24. And you want others to know this Jesus, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God, Hebrews 12, 2. Because of Jesus, you have been set free from the law of sin and death, Romans 8, 2. You do not see the world the same way as you once did. It is full of wonder at what God has done and is doing. That old song, red, brown, yellow, black, and white, and I might add blind and deaf with Down syndrome, spina bifida, a whole range of disabilities. They are precious in his sight, just as you are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world, and so do you. This Jesus, who loves you and wants you to experience ever-increasing measures of joy with him for eternity, said to us in Mark 16:15. Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Welcoming families like mine goes right to the core purpose of why you are in ministry. Second, this God who has given you life and hope and peace has a special regard for those living with disabilities. First, he tells us that he created some to live with disability, like in Exodus 4.11. Then the Lord said to him, Who has made man's mouth? Who makes him mute or deaf or seeing or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? There's no embarrassment about it by God. He just does it. Then just to make sure we understand a few things, he reminds us that he knows our days. In your book were written, every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. Psalm 139, 16. Every day was already known about my son, including the horrible days of surgeries and seizures and potential financial ruin in the family. And those days have purpose. Jesus answered, It was not that this man sinned, or his parents, that this man was born blind but that the works of God might be displayed in him. John 9, verse 3. So, to review, serving families like mine goes to the heart of why you're in ministry, and the God who saved you has special regard for those he created with disabilities. Third, families like mine make your church a better, healthier place. When I returned to church, I was intensely interested in what was being taught. I struggled to understand, sometimes with hard, even harsh questions, 
But isn't that what you want as a leader or a pastor? Someone who is interested in what you have to say and will chew over it and apply it to his life? These really are life and death questions for us. Now my sinful flesh would prefer that our weaknesses weren't so evident, that we could just show up and smile and say everything was just fine and pretend that we're put together. But we can't. And that opens the door for God to show up. For example, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. Even more importantly, God himself has this to say about those the culture looks down upon. The parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. 1 Corinthians 12.22 just a reminder, indispensable is defined as absolutely necessary, essential, or requisite. I'm guessing you want a healthy church or ministry, so it might be a good idea to go out and find some of these indispensable ones. Fourth, families like mine know we're complicated for you. God certainly knows we're complicated for you, and Jesus promised to help. Consider how incredible this is from Jesus himself. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. John 14, 26 and 27. We know you're afraid when we walk through the door. We can see it in your eyes. How beautiful it is that you can turn to the Helper, that Jesus himself promised to remove that fear. Paul stated it equally beautifully in Philippians 4.19, And my God will supply every need of yours. How? According to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. The enemy of your faith and mine, and our own sin and the culture in which we live, would prefer that you see families like mine as broken and battered, unpleasant, angry and needy, and expensive in terms of your time and limited resources. God replies, I made them. I have regard for them. They are indispensable to you. I will help you. Further, God says he will reward you. And whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water because he is, is a disciple, truly I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. Matthew 10, 42. Think on that. God himself will reward you for the smallest act of kindness to one of his precious, vulnerable ones. Oh, you'll also experience glimpses of this reward in this life. Every person who has served my son, who cannot tell them anything about what he is really thinking and feeling, and certainly can't use words of affection, has said that they have received far more from him than they have given to him. They have been blessed by a young man who cannot see, cannot process rational thought, and cannot use emotional language. And they have been blessed. Is it easy? No, it is not. Do you always see positive results? No, you will fail at times. We might yell at you, and you might not see anything good because you have included us. Or worse, moms go home in tears, and dads go home defeated because of how people responded to our children and to us. And you don't even know it. I'm not asking you to do something easy. I'm asking you to do something that's impossible. But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. Ephesians 2, 4 through 10. We, every one of us, including those he created with disabilities, were created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand. You are being given gifts from God himself for the sake of your ministry and your life and your own joy. So, this is is for the very purpose of your ministry, with people created unashamedly by God for the sake of a healthier church, so that God can pour out his power and love and mercy and help on you as you serve. Include families like mine. You get more of God, who is the very source of all hope and peace and joy. Now, 
May you be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Colossians 1, 11 through 14. I have a couple of resources I highly recommend. Just the way I am. God's Good Design and Disability by Krista Horning, full of Bible and statements about God, along with her life story. It's available through Christian Focus. Wrestling with an Angel by Greg Lucas, a father's story of God's goodness in the hardest of circumstances with his son's disabilities. This is available through Cruciform Press. Disability in the Gospel by Michael Bates, about disability and the gospel from Crossway and a free ebook at DesiringGod.org, Disability and the Sovereign Goodness of God, Sermons from John 9 and John 5 and How Jesus Dealt with Disability. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope, even as you are serving families like mine. Romans 15, 13. Thank you for watching.